Our lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 32 through 34. Hear now the word of God. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Somewhere in the middle of the year in 1940, the British cracked the Enigma code that the Germans were using. This is in the beginning stages of World War II. And the British could now, sometimes at least, listen in on what the Germans were planning to do. Now, if you're in the military, that is a very helpful thing to have happen in order to know what it is that the enemy is planning on. So towards the end of 1940, the code crackers then reported to the higher-ups in the military and the government because the Germans were going to plan a bombing raid. And they were planning the bombing raid on a city known as Coventry. And then there was a huge debate. Because on the one hand, you know, the first instinct is, oh, we know where there's going to be a bombing raid. Let's get those people out of there. Let's evacuate the city of Coventry. But the other side of the debate said, if we evacuate Coventry before the bombing raid, that will then tell the Germans that we understand their code. And they'll change their code. And then we might not know something militarily later on. And it was a fierce debate, and there wasn't much time. And finally, the decision was made. And the town of Coventry was not warned of the bombing. November the 20th, 1940, Coventry was bombed. Now, somewhere in there, I think there's some pictures. Coventry had a 13th century cathedral. And this is what was left of it the day after the bombing. That decision has been debated through the decades afterwards. But one of the decisions that got made in Coventry was that they would not rebuild the 13th century cathedral. They rebuilt the cathedral, but not this one. And so if you go to the next picture there, Carrie, you can go to Coventry, England today, and you can still see the shell of that bombed out 13th century cathedral. All right, carry one more. The tower still exists. And uh, if you're in good enough shape, I am not, you can climb the tower and look down on the remnants. What you're looking down on now is the remnants of that 13th century cathedral. The green roof over to the side there, that's the new cathedral that was built right alongside it. All right, and I think there's one more. But that's what's left of the 13th century cathedral in Coventry. Now, on the night after it was bombed, on the few days after it was bombed, once things cooled down, literally, then the people who worked at the cathedral, the priests who tended to it, the workmen who were there, began going through the rubble. There are a couple of different versions of this story, but either a workman or one of the priests then found some of the old 13th century timbers that had held the roof up, found that two of them had been charred, but that they had fallen in the form of a cross. And so, if it's not clear on the screen, it's on the back of your bulletin, if you would like to see. 
And so either this priest or the workman tied those charred timbers together and brought it into the remnants of the cathedral and leaned it up against what had been the high altar. And then the provost of the cathedral in his Christmas message announced that there would be no attempt at retribution for the destruction of the, temple, of the cathedral. Now that doesn't sound like much to us today, but in 1940, the Blitz was on. The Germans were bombing London on a regular basis. They were bombing all along the southeastern coast of England. And it's not helpful propaganda if somebody stands up and says, well, they bombed our church out of existence, but we're not going to seek retribution. That does not help recruit military people at all. It does not help keep up the fighting spirit. And what the priest did next caused a huge storm, at least theologically, because what he did was he went back to that wall and he wrote on it, Father, forgive. Now that doesn't sound like a huge theological storm off the top of your head, does it? Basically, he was quoting those last words from Jesus, from the cross. Father, forgive. Now Jesus, of course, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And you and I are very used to that. And so every year when we hear the passion story, we hear those words and we go, oh yes, doesn't that sound just like Jesus? Here's Jesus in pain, dying, and with his dying, one of his dying breaths, he's asking for the people who have done this to him to be forgiven. And that just sounds like Jesus that we all know. And it does sound like the Jesus we know. At least the first three words, Father, forgive them. That sounds just like Jesus. It's the next phrase that becomes problematic. And Luke is the only one who records it. And so you have to begin to ask, what was Luke saying? Because Luke adds another phrase, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And in Bible study on Wednesday night, I asked the group, I said, all right, who is it that doesn't know what this, what's going on here? Who is it that does not know what they're doing? Do the Roman soldiers who are hammering nails into human beings' arms and legs, do the screams of those men not tell them that there's something going on here? Do they not know what they're doing? Does the crowd that gathered at Pilate's palace and shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Do they not know what crucifixion is and what's going on? How about Pilate himself? Pilate's a government official. Does the government official not understand that giving in to peer pressure is not how you govern? Does Pilate not understand what's happening? Pilate even tried to foist him off. Oh, you're from Galilee? That's Herod's department. This is King Herod, the son of the Christmas King Herod. This is King Herod Antipas. And so Pilate ships Jesus over to King Herod and says, you deal with me. And King Herod wanted a miracle. And Jesus didn't provide a miracle. And so Herod sends it. what? Herod didn't understand that sending somebody back to the Roman govern, governor was going to end up in crucifixion? How about the women that were standing at the cross, at least according to Luke? They were standing off away silent. Do silent people not understand that if you stay silent while something wrong is going on, what's going to happen? 
the Bible study even pushed me. What about Judas? What about Judas? You think that betraying your friend for money and you don't know what's going on? I think Luke was in high ironic form. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Who is it exactly that doesn't know what they're doing? The priest at Coventry created a theological firestorm because what he wrote was, Father, forgive. And he didn't say, them. He left it a little on the ambiguous side. And 40 years later, when it came out that the Enigma Code had been broken and that the government knew Coventry was going to get bombed, it got a little more ambiguous. Father, forgive. Wonder exactly who it is that the priest is hoping that God is going to forgive. I wonder who it is that Luke is hoping that God is going to forgive. The people who are causing other people pain because we're just following orders? Corrupt government officials? They don't know what they're doing? Friends who betray relationships? They don't know what they're doing? People who stand silently by when evil is happening, they don't know what they're doing. Governments who keep silent so they can save lives, they don't know what they're doing. Governments who declare war and bomb from the skies, they don't know what they're doing. No wonder the priest left it a little on the ambiguous side. Who is it that needs forgiving? Them? Us? Every November in Coventry, on the anniversary of the bombing, there's a worship service that's held. In good weather, and of course in England, good weather is a dubious term. But in England, in good weather, they will worship out in the ruins of the old cathedral. Otherwise, they move inside the new cathedral. They use a litany. And the response to the litany is, Father, forgive. And so I would invite you when I indicate to use that litany, Father, forgive. This is the covenant litany of forgiveness. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class, Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own. Father, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Father, forgive. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned the homeless, the refugee, Father, forgive. The lust which dishonors the bodies of men, women, and children, Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God, Father, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender hearting, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgives you.